Good day to everyone. Bon dia, buongiorno, bonjour, buenos dias. Welcome in, welcome to Wisdom de El. Today um, I just wanted to address a few of the comments that have been placed upon the video that I uploaded a few months ago, probably five months ago now. Now I have explained that there has been a lot of censorship, silencing and restricting the truth from being exposed to the public um, and all the scenarios that have unfolded over the last few years. And it's been quite tough and difficult, but, um, but there's a few comments that have been put onto the video that was uploaded onto this channel. And it was uh, headed, the evidence that was hidden by Norfolk Constabulary but it wasn't just Norfolk Constabulary, it was the Crown Prosecution Service, the Ministry of Justice and the Government Legal Department. Now I had wrote to the Chief Constable of Norfolk and Suffolk, who was Simon Bailey at the time, um, many, many um, correspondents to send to him letters um, for clarity of where this all started and would stem from, and there was never any response from him whatsoever. So it was kind of coerced and forced into the courtroom without um, the established evidence and clarification of what I was requesting and asking for. And um, and then with the court, there's been no um, process followed, no rule of law being followed. It's um, very coercive behaviour. Um, and as I said, the video of which I'm referring to now the video that was put onto this channel about five months ago was the evidence that was withheld while um, a conviction was established without the woman being present in the courtroom and also um, sentencing being passed in a court that was um, instructed to send this case to judicial for judicial view in November 2021 by a, he was the recorder of Cambridge Crown Court, um, he'd instructed the lower courts to send the papers and this court case to the High Court for it to be seen by a High Court judge. There was a clear breach of the convention rights um, which this judge who had seen the case had clarified with my, my work and my writings and my requests. So I was waiting nearly a year for this outcome and I found out that this judge had retired and the court hadn't followed these instructions. So this is why I have had to result to putting that video on this channel. Now I had a, I did have another YouTube channel previous to this, um, but that was very much censored. Um, there was not any traffic on there and, and it was the same with all my social media, which kind of got infiltrated and um, it just wasn't how it was when all this started. So I was used in Facebook and um, Telegram and WhatsApp um, with a few groups uh, that I'd got people together, you know, and um, it was very easily done how they, they infiltrate things. So I was left to basically deal with this myself and my guidance from the Most High. So going back to the comments that have been placed onto this video now, just, just a couple. One was saying that um, they, as in me and the guy who was fighting in the video with the security guards, they, they put these videos up because they want to get revenue. Now I can confirm with my hand on my heart Nothing that I have done since these draconian rules have been put into place in 2020 where I lost my father and any support, justice wasn't followed uh, professionally or properly. And there's been a big de de decrease of rights to the individual. But it was never about money gain. It was never about profit it was about doing the right thing. Now I clearly said to this, this um, whoever had put this comment onto the video that they hadn't read the description of the video because it clearly states 
that the woman was under the impression that the man who was fighting with them security guards was supposed to be there to support her that day to, to get clarity on the events that had taken place previous leading up to that point of why she was there at the court that day and this scenario that took place um, brought another charge on the woman but it also distracted and took the truth and the facts of the matter away from what had happened previously for the reason for her to be at the court that day which was false fail to attend warrants that were issued and executed outside her home um, and then turning up to court and not being allowed into the court building. Now this is just a long, 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 long chain of events and there's too much to talk about to go into but, but there was never any intention of monetary value the censoring and the silencing and the ridicules, the humiliation, the, the illusions to cover the truth has prevented the truth being established, heard by the public. Or the rule of law being followed by, this, by the establishment and the people who were supposed to impose and enforce the rule of law. So... Although, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. It does, it does try to muddy the waters of the, the truth that you're trying to get across. So just for the record, there was never any tension of any monetary gain. It was always about the truth. Um, and Jesus tells his disciples explicitly in Matthew 5.13, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses his flavour how shall it be seasoned it is then good for nothing but to be thrown and out and trampled under the feet of men um, there are two parts to the covenant god and his people um, they exchange the salt as a tangible symbol um, of their loyalty and friendship um, and salt it represents cleansing and removing what is corrupt um, addressing what is toxic which is so heartwarming for me because I know the reason why I was led to having my spiritual baths salt baths that kind of thing which cleanses the energy um, and my guidance off the angels Mary mother and Jesus himself so it's, when you start putting all these things together you can see that the picture is what God the story is what God is trying to show through us into the world for his children to then unite and come together. Um, so the salt, the salt is um, to remove what is corrupt and addressing what is toxic. And um, the oils as well. So... The oil, the anointing oil releases and healing of custodianship and stewards of God's land using the three elements as the visual indicator of what we are praying through in our areas of responsibility. Um, the results can be profound. So what God is talking about here is um, the living water, the living water, the salt and the oil. They all are part of the recipe for our custodianship on the land to uphold God's law, God's morality of how he wants humanity to live. Sin, we all get a bit digi or sin is a very old word and it can be misconstrued into so many other things, you know. Um, but it was a word that they used in the text, the biblical text, um, as the opposite of what God's people should be doing. So if you were sinning, you wasn't following God. But to sum it all up, sin, back in them times, actually meant lawlessness. So if we, we when we hear the word sin, if we turn it into our 
into what it sh what it should be into this day and age, the context in this day and age, which is lawlessness. We can then start to read things a little bit more easier and it resonates a lot more with us because um, I think it's a very old and religious word that people who have not experienced the love of God would um, run from in some respects. So let's look at it as lawlessness, which is why God bestowed the law upon Moses for Moses to give it to his people to get rid of lawlessness, you know. And when we start using that word, we can, it, it resonates a lot better with us. Um, so Moses was given the law to give to the people for them all to live under this, these, the Ten Commandments and um, for humanity to thrive, to thrive in, in unity. And then following on from Moses, we had Jesus, God's begotten son in the flesh, which was the physical interpretation of um, God's law and his children. He was God's begotten son. And um, I think we forget about that. I think it gets a lot, very, very confusing when we, when we don't try and interpret the, the, the scripture and the text from how it was back then into our modern, modern way of understanding things. So I hope just by hearing that sin actually means lawlessness, that you might be able to accept um, the text uh, a little better in this modern day. So on the other channel that I had before this, um, I was very much trying to give advice or ways, ways that I find helpful in dealing with spiritual warfare and the things that have been going on in society over the last three years. And a lot of it is down to you um, by by knowing oneself, by trusting one's instinct, you know, and, and you do that by getting close to God, you know, it's, it's inevitable. You get close to God and then you start realising that your intuition and, and the, the signs that you get are the messages that we get from the Most High. Of course, we have to be discerning um, to make sure that the messages that we are getting and the feelings that we're getting are coming from the Most High because there's a lot of projection in this world. And this is why I say knowing yourself and not looking outside of yourself for answers or or validation always looking for outside sources to give you the validation and credit that you need and um, that's where we fail because it's only the most high god that um that we need the the stamp of approval so to speak um yeah and and also i just like to clarify when I talk about God, I talk about my God, the most high God, the God and source of creation of the universe. OK, so it doesn't matter what church I go into. It doesn't matter who I'm around or or what's being preached around me. The word God to me and my intention is the most high God above all of the universe, the creation of the universe and source is God for me. So it's about intentions, you know, and, and sometimes I've been sat in places of worship and I've heard the pastor or, or whoever's given the, the, the ceremony and the prayers that does that it doesn't resonate it does not resonate and I, and I feel to myself sometimes I question myself and I think 
well, what God are you worshipping? Because it doesn't feel like my God is appreciative of them words that are being spoken from that particular pastor. No names mentioned. So it's very important to know your own intentions. And no matter where you're going in life, as long as your intentions are true to what you you are headed for and what your your belief is that's where that's where we can we become in our own power okay because if we're just being led and listening to others outside of us we can be very easily influenced and taken into let's just say the wrong the wrong field where we naively think that we are worshipping the God that we should be worshipping, but in fact, they're worshipping another God. So I do, I, I really think this is something that needs to be clarified around the world. Um, what God are we worshipping? What God are you worshipping? Because I know what God I'm worshipping. It's the most high. My God is compassionate. My God is full of unconditional love. He is a parent of the name of of the universe to us all. God is love. God is spirit that is there to help and embody and love us all. But as in the as in the Egyptian times previous, there were many many gods, and even in the Hebrew text Elohim, it was it was a plural word which meant gods. Jesus' message was about the one true God, the Father, the Father of creation, you know, and, and the word Father is, is that parent, that parent's love. So remember that, remember that God is our, our parent of, of everything in this universe. Um, but if our intentions and our energy is either either willingly or unwillingly being given to um, inferior gods which is the ideology then our god my god is not getting the praise the love and the energy um, um, exchange from his children and him or her god is spirit god is love God is the God of the universe, okay? But when you realise there are many inferior gods to the one true God, it can be it can be confusing and it can be manipulative. So that's where we need to be very, very sure and strong in our own intentions, okay? So it doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing or who you're around, you know the God that you you love, you feel feel the love and you give the love back. Like you're being watched over. Every move you make is being watched over. So make it proud. You know, we are the salt of the earth. As it says, as Jesus said to his disciples explicitly in Matthew 5:13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavour, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trodden under the foot of men. So I really hope that I didn't ramble on too much there, but I felt like that was something that really I needed to get out. 